everybody, Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas welcoming you to the Metro Manila Arena here in the Philippines for tonight's main event. 12 rounds of heavyweight action between these two great warriors. expectation in a matchup like this, a power puncher versus power puncher, is that the fight's not going to last long. But what if it does? Then what? The guy with less power is going to win because he's a guy that has a reserve, a reserve in a place that he's ready to go to in case the power is not there. Able to defend and then go on the offensive. Good job landing three punches by bad intentions. hit but he sends it right back <laughs> reaching the halfway mark of this round it's been a recent trend Teddy where we've seen in the heavyweight division a lot of Eastern Europeans dominating. Why do you think that is? Same thing in basketball. I don't think they're the better athletes, but you know what? There's an urgency. There's a real hunger. This is their opportunity. The fighters over here and the basketball players for that part, they have too many options here. Over there, they make the most of it. And fundamentally, they're very sound. Good block. <laughs> well placed counter punch by bad intentions. Just 10 seconds to go in this round. End of the round is upon us. And if the next round holds up like that, we're going to be in for a real treat. No, we will be because both these guys have the philosophy that their best defense is their offense. Oh, he gets to him with an uppercut. Oh, man, he's in rough shape after absorbing that blow. Well-placed counterpunch by Buster. There he is, working the body. Oh, and look at this, Teddy, wasting no time getting to know each other. No, they came right to the center ring, said hello. Locks away that headshot. And there he counters back against his opponent. Good looking counter punch. Good looking counter punch. by 
by bad intentions. And coming upon the halfway mark of this three-minute round. He took a shot, but he came back with a right hand of his own. Off to the side, a little swing and a miss going upstairs. Oh, and he returns fire with a left hand. Well placed counter punch by Buster. Well done that time, landing the counter punch. Come on, side. What a good counter punch by bad intentions. You know, he did a very nice job of finishing up that. He put the third punch in there and landed the combination. Final 10 seconds of round number two. So here we are, a new round underway, and in that last round, he got tagged. He got hit pretty hard, Teddy. Yeah, he did. He got caught. But now, the first thing is, we all know he got caught, but why did he get caught? He has to be able to decipher that in his head. He has to be able to have the answer to that so it doesn't happen again. Good job protecting himself. Good combination. Nice block by bad intentions. Good block there by Buster. Up and down, side to side. Able to dismiss it. He took a shot, but he gives one of his own. A left hand scores. Able to block that away. It was targeted for his head. Coming to the halfway point of this third round. Good defense upstairs to stay away from that offensive assault. And now they're opening up. Both right hands land. Good stuff in the opening two minutes. A minute to go in this round. He throws a counter punch there. Block. Good looking counter punch. Buster's putting together punch stats tonight that fall right in line with what his strategy is. Outside fighter, throwing lots of jabs, landing lots of jabs. Well, what it is is the jab is the table setter. And the jab tonight has set up the table where he's been able to eat whatever he's wanted. Coming to the end of this round. Joe and Teddy with you ringside. Teddy, a round like that where it's a lot of busy activity and both guys being busy, 
When you were a trainer, are those the kind of rounds that you prefer, or do you like the pace to be a little slower? Does it depend on each guy? No, if I have a fight, I'd rather have a guy fighting a guy that you never see him. <laughs> Leave me the heck alone. And where I'm in control all the time. But the fans love to see a fight like that. <laughs> defend and then go on the offensive what a chin can you believe the shots this guy's absorbing and more importantly can his opponent believe it you know what you want to hit a guy so you figure that that's a good thing that's an encouraging thing this is a case where his opponent might get discouraged just by seeing his guy take those kind of shots <laughs> Targeted counterpunch by Buster. <laughs> Showing you some defense there with the block. Halfway through this round. Keeping his hands up, getting way of his opponent's effort. Able to counter that attack. A nice block by Buster. into offense comes back with the counter punch and that's exactly what he brings to the game he makes you miss he makes you pay and he makes you think twice about throwing a punch later on committing up top now he goes there again good defensive skill with the block by buster keeping this up they are setting such a scorching pace of action in this fight there has to come a point in this fight where he has to make the commitment to throw the power punches 
it's hard to envision a way he's going to win this fight without going down that road. He doesn't have the confidence to do it. I don't know if he's mentally strong enough to do it. I think he's worried about throwing hard at the guy because maybe in his mind that means the guy will throw hard back at him. Able to defend and then go on the offensive. Halfway through this round here. A good block. Wow, just sit back and enjoy this one. You can tell both guys are so determined to give everything they have here tonight. Joe, it's like the first time you heard Ray Charles sing God Bless America. You knew it was special. You knew you hadn't heard it before. I haven't seen anything like this before. Good looking counter punch. He scored well after being hit himself. Good defensive skill. Fires right back at him. Smart counterpunch by bad intentions. Ten clicks of the talk. We come to the end of this round. Alongside Teddy Atlas, I'm Joe Tessitore. Boy, it's a very closely contested fight, isn't it? Yeah, it has been, Joe, but it's going to be up now to the judges. Hopefully they have their eyes wide open because they're going to have to look really closely, not just at the action overall, but who's landed the cleaner, more effective punches. And a smart counterpunch by bad intentions. Able to dismiss his opponent's shot, and then comes back with an uppercut. Don't stay in one those elbows in, blocks the body shot. Good block there by Buster. And a big left hand by Bad Intentions. Reaching the halfway mark of this round. Trigger right away with the left hand after getting tagged himself. <laughs> and a smart counter punch by Buster. Nice block. <laughs> Ten seconds remaining in this round. 
We've reached the halfway point of this battle. Real good fight here. Tough to get a sense of who's really up. I could see making an argument for either guy, but that's a testament to both guys and what they've been willing to bring to this battle tonight. Yeah, and what it's a testament to, Joe, is that it's an enjoyable fight. After a while, you don't even concentrate on who's up. All you know is you're enjoying every bit of it. Showing you some defense there with the block. Able to defend and then go on the offensive. Needs to improve that accuracy. Missed with the headshot. Comes right back at him with the left hand. Defense upstairs to stay away from that offensive assault. Well targeted, one two by Buster. Oh, and he's got something for him himself, and it's a left hand. There on the punch by bad intentions. One minute to go in a round that feels like an all time classic. Punch for punch, they're meeting each other. Solid counter punch by bad intentions. Bad attentions is really in a groove right now, landing that straight punch. Well, what he's doing is he's staying outside at the right distance. He's getting his opponent, you know, sort of lean in a little bit, and then, bang, that straight shot is right there. Halfway through what is one of the best rounds you'll ever see. Just great action. Now, it's unbelievable. I mean, if you love roller coasters, you go to an amusement park. If you want to see left hooks, right hands, every direction, great chins, great endurance, great heart, you come to this fight. You stay right here. Ten seconds to go in the seventh. Able to defend and then go on the offensive. Now this round comes to an end. Joe and Teddy with your ring set. Uh, this is one of those fights, Teddy. It just feels like to me where it's going to be tough to really score. I mean, it's been a close fight. Yeah, it's a hard fight to score because you have one guy maybe a little busier, but the other guy makes up for it because he's a little heavier. A little heavier with those blows. So it's a matter of maybe the taste of the judges, what they prefer. Gets rid of that. It was intended for his head. Accurate uppercut after taking a shot of his own. He's just not concentrating on the body as a target here, Teddy. No, and, you know, you wouldn't mind if he didn't have to. In other words, it all depends on the scenario. This scenario says that he should be going to the body, and he should recognize that. And that's part of the talent of a fighter, recognition, that you have to recognize where the opportunities are. And he pulls the trigger again. Blocks that punch. And you see he turned defense into offense, comes back with the counter punch. And that's exactly what he brings to the game. He makes you miss, he makes you pay. And he makes you think twice about throwing a punch later on. Blocks that punch. And a 
another jab comes in by bad intentions. Good job protecting himself. So swiftly able to turn defense into offense. Nice counter punch. And what you're noticing here is his opponent is starting to be a little wary of letting this jab go because every time he jabs, he gets caught. by Buster. Teddy, making predictions in boxing is often a dangerous task, but I'll make one right here that seems pretty obvious to me as we come to the end of that round here. This fight is going to be a brutal display as long as it lasts. It's kind of like going and watching that home run contest. Nobody's trying to hit singles or doubles. You know they're all going for the fences. now in what has been a closely contested fight. One of those fights that somebody is still waiting to break through and be a difference maker in. A headshot blocked. He scored well after being hit himself. Gotta hurt. Oh, he is stunned. He could go down. He is staggered and stumbling. Come on now. Able to block that away. It was targeted for his head. Good block. See, the defense pays off as he gets rid of that downstairs. I don't think that blood's going to be a big deal in terms of his vision. It's on the cheek. He just doesn't want any cut to worsen. Teddy, this is one of those moments where you just wish you could pick up the phone and... Oh! Buster stunned, and he is hurt. Scoring well with that combination by Buster. Boy, what guts. What guts to stay in there and gather yourself again after he was taking a beating. Yeah, what guts, what instincts, and what a set of whiskers. Good block by Buster. He missed with that headshot. How about that exchange? Able to cover up along the belt line, blocks that one. by Buster. Yeah. 
Williams. So the round comes to its conclusion, and it's a round in which our man here, as he heads back, was really tagged pretty solid. So if you're the trainer in the corner, what's your approach? Well, you know, that's a great question. My approach is that I have to remind him that he's on common ground. He's probably going to think he's in a place where he's never been before, but I'm going to remind him, hey, remember you got hurt in the gym? And then give him something to correct the problem. You know, tell him some technical things that he needs to hear. Blocked by bad intentions. There's no need to be on the inside. Keep your distance. Rain. He's still not moving in the very nice job landing that counter punch, getting away from one that was coming at him. Buster is showing that he doesn't have any head movement defensively whatsoever. What else is there, Teddy? Well, there's legs. Start using your legs a little bit. Get out of range. One way or the other, get out of the other man's talking place. And a smart counter punch by bad intentions. And we've reached the halfway point of round 10. Keeping his hands up, getting way of his opponent's effort. Punched by bad intentions. <laughs> Fine fundamentals, good counter punch. <laughs> Teddy, it just feels like one of those nights, one of those fights where somebody's getting hurt, where this is not going to the judges' scorecards. I feel like I'm in Coney Island watching one of those hot dog eating contests where somebody's going to try to eat 50 of them, 60 of them. In other words, he's not worried how he's going to feel at the end of the night. Another round, and if it keeps up with the rest of them, it'll be closely contested and hard to score. by bad intentions. So swiftly able to turn defense into offense. Nice counter punch. And what you're noticing here is his opponent is starting to be a little wary of letting his jab go because every time he jabs, he gets caught. Attack 
tactical game paying off. You can see the counter punch. Yeah, you see the counter punch, but you know what I see? I see a little tentativeness now in him because he's afraid to let anything go because when he misses, bang, he gets caught. Needs to improve that accuracy. Missed with the headshot. Good looking counter punch. What a fight. What a great, great, non-stop action fight this has been. to the end of the round. A round that I'm having a tough time trying to think about who won. I can only imagine what the judges are thinking about. Teddy, if there's one thing you look for in a round like that and say, okay, I'm going to give it to this guy over this guy, what is it? Well, the first thing is, if I'm a judge, I take a little notepad and I make a little mark down blue or red corner what he did early. Because sometimes a judge has a tendency to forget what was done early and only go with what went late. to the point where clearly the referee's giving it a look. He's thinking about stopping this fight. Is this the time now, Teddy, where the fighter has to understand that and try to end the fight on his own terms? Well, it's a catch-22 right now, Joe, because he has to be more defensive-minded. He has to make sure that he doesn't catch any more leather in that area to worsen that cut. But he also has to find some offense to slow this guy down, to give him a reason to start stepping back instead of stepping forward. by bad intentions. <laughs> Staying away from those headshots with his defense up top. The tactical game paying off. You can see the counter punch. Yeah, you see the counter punch, but you know what I see? I see a little tentativeness now in him because he's afraid to let anything go because when he misses, bang, he gets caught. Punch intended for the head. Right, do it. Halfway through what is one of the best rounds you'll ever see. Just great action. No, it's unbelievable. I mean, if you love roller coasters, you go to an amusement park. If you want to see left hooks, right hands, every direction, great chins, great endurance, great heart, you come to this fight. You stay right here. was 
good stuff throughout. Which way did the judges lean? Let's send it up to the ring to find out. He's your winner by split decision tonight. Yeah, I disagree with that. That was a split decision. I had a win much clearer.